If you think the crypto ride has been wild so far, you haven't seen anything yet. The team and I at Collective Shift continue to analyze the markets and today I wanna to share with you in a new video style on my YouTube channel where I think the market's going, where the opportunities are, when is altcoin season coming up and some interesting predictions that I don't think some of you were thinking about where I think this market's going to be going. So if you like this style of video, I'd love for you to give me some feedback in the comments and make sure to leave me a subscribe if you wanna see more videos like these. Now, let's jump into it. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen here. Uh, in terms of where we are in the market right now, and obviously we've had a pretty deep correction. Well, not, relatively speaking, not that deep, but for some people, you know, considering where we are, um, this may have felt quite deep. I was actually speaking with a friend recently who, who got in at crypto only in the last few months, basically bought the local top with some altcoins uh, and was drawing down 45, 50% on some of the altcoins like Solana, for example. And I think for some people new to crypto, and I remember when I got back into crypto, you know, seven, eight years ago, though that first cycle, that first bull market, when you get those deeper corrections, you panic. And this friend of mine actually lost $40,000 recently. I said, how on earth have you lost $40,000? We've literally been going up for seven months in a row on a monthly Bitcoin chart. And he told me that he bought the basic, you know, bunch of altcoins, they retraced 40 or 50%, he panicked and he sold. <laughs> and... I think this is so true for so many new investors and why we get these corrections that people panic. You don't get these blue chip stocks in the stock market world retracing 40%, 50% in a bull market. You know, Crypto is, is completely unique and uh, for so many people, they, they think something fundamentally has changed or they think something's wrong with the asset or they think it's going to continue to go down. But you know, markets are driven by sentiment, narrative, over leveraged traders, news, and there's been a lot of stuff going on at the moment in the world and, and why we're getting these corrections, but it's completely normal. I mean, in the last bull market, we had 13 10% plus corrections, and these are amazing buying opportunities. And I'll share some of those opportunities that I think are, are good to take advantage of pretty soon. But you know, one of the things that we use at Collective Shift to give us an indication of where we are in the market right now is uh, on-chain analysis. And on-chain analysis basically just gives that really good understanding of those movements on the blockchain, who are those holders, who's buying, who's selling. And one of my favorite, favorite uh, ratios and, and charts I like to look at is the market value to realize value ratio. Basically what this chart is showing us in the big, in the black line is the Bitcoin price and the orange line is that, that ratio. And it's basically describing the unrealized profit that Bitcoin holders have and when they start to take profits, that ratio comes down. So as you'll see back in 2018 on the left-hand side, uh, and then also in 2021, I'm just gonna move my face here. Uh, you can see when these ratios got you know, quite high, there was a lot of unrealized profits, meaning there was a lot of Bitcoin holders in profit and they started to you know, sell down. Once we reached these ratios of sort of 3.5, 4, even 4.8 in the 2018 run. Now, right now we're kind of sitting at about three, a bit over three, 3.1 which gives me an indication from an on-chain perspective, we're probably halfway through this cycle if history was to repeat in terms of when Bitcoin holders start to take profits. Now, what happens when Bitcoin holders start to take profits? Well, usually money rotates down from the larger caps, Bitcoin and ETH, into that sort of top 100 and then down into the, the sort of bottom section of altcoins and what we traditionally see is altcoin season. Now, I'll get back to that pretty soon, but you know where we are in the cycle right now, we're, 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 we're coming up to that bubble phase. Now, historically speaking, this Bitcoin halving is played out exactly like the 2020 Bitcoin halving cycle. Basically, we had a 20, 25% correction leading up to the 2020 Bitcoin halving. We consolidated through the halving and then we have this big bubble phase afterwards. And I'm expecting something pretty similar. I think we're going to chop around these levels that we are right now for probably the next few weeks um, until sort of the, those fundamentals of the halving really comes into, into account. We get a lot more buyers uh, and then just the fundamental growth of Bitcoin will take off. I think what we saw of why Bitcoin price ran up so fast pre-Bitcoin halving was a lot of speculation, obviously, around the Bitcoin halving, the ETF, which has been spoken about so much. Uh, but ultimately, what's going to push us past the Bitcoin halving and what's going to be the driver uh, to continue us pushing us into the growth, uh, sorry, into the bubble phase is, is the fundamentals. You know, I think speculation has driven us up into the Bitcoin halving. But if we look at the amount of Bitcoin that's being bought at it, even an ETF level, versus now what's going to be available, you know, post Bitcoin halving from a supply perspective. To put it in perspective, pre-Bitcoin halving, about 60 million US dollars of Bitcoin was coming into new circulation per day. Post Bitcoin halving, that's now 30 million. And we had one day where the ETF demand was over a billion dollars of buying. There was a billion dollars of new Bitcoin, sorry, a billion dollars of new capital coming in to buy Bitcoin. And now Post Bitcoin halving, only $30 million of new Bitcoin is coming into supply, which is a crazy ratio. Now, obviously, there's a lot of other market movements, but 
I think what's really going to push us into this next stage is the fundamental side of, of Bitcoin. Now, the other thing to note, what's pushed us higher in previous cycles as well has been the correlation with the central banks printing more money. We haven't seen that this cycle yet. If anything, we've had that sort of quantitative tightening and there's been less money circulating around, which hasn't found its way into Bitcoin. Um, what's happening, you know, it's terrible over in the Middle East at the moment with the war. That's also pushing pressure on uh, the Fed to not cut rates. And we're having another uh, the rate uh, coming out in the first of a rate update coming out on the first of May. You know, we expect they to, them to hold uh, where they are. You know, it's not until we start to see those rates come down and market and money becomes easier to access that it will find its way into Bitcoin. So another thing just to note that I think we're still probably a few weeks, if not a couple of months away from really starting to see us, you know, head into that bubble phase. And ultimately, I think one of the biggest things right now is that what's that next narrative going to be? You know, we've been pushing for that Bitcoin halving narrative for so long. Post Bitcoin halving, what is that narrative? In previous cycles, we had you know, NFTs, we had ICOs, we've had AI, we have Metaverse. There's, there, there isn't really that new retail narrative to grab onto right now. What I think will happen is I think Bitcoin will continue to grind higher over time through the fundamental economics of what's going on and the continued buy side pressure. And it won't be until really we get into, you know, that $100,000 level. When, when Bitcoin goes over 100,000 USD, it gets back in the mainstream media, it gets back into, uh, you know, social media and people start talking about crypto and Bitcoin. Retail investors will come back, they'll get excited about it and then start to find out, you know, well, what's next? Because retail investors, we know, think Bitcoin's expensive and they'll start to try and figure out what's that next best thing and, and then altcoin season will start to kick off. In terms of sentiment as well, to understand where we are right now, like just a basic Google trends, you know, looking at this in terms of the last two or three years, we're still down quite considerably from the peak. Um, even looking at social trends and things like that, you know, we got a lot of euphoria leading up to the Bitcoin halving with the meme coin mania and things like that. But ultimately, it was a lot of bigger wallets. You know, it was a lot of, uh, you know, folks that have been around for a little while trading crypto. And I was speaking to some exchanges that we're partnered with at Collective Shift, and they were sort of repeating the same thing that we were seeing. There was not a lot of new retail money coming in. It was a lot of existing capital that was floating around that was, you know, trading and trying to, you know, um, leverage their positions. Another thing as well that we can see here from a sentiment perspective is just the weekly new YouTube views of influencers' videos. Um, now, I'm not a big fan of crypto YouTube influencers. I mean, some of them are good, but ultimately, you know, a lot of them put out not that great information, but this is where retail investors go. And right now, again, we're, we're down quite considerably from the 2020, 2021 peaks of um, you know YouTube views. So again, another indication to show us that retail investors are not quite here yet. Now, in terms of these drawdowns and these corrections, I think these are magical buying opportunities. It's really hard to buy during these times. Like psychologically, the idea of buying when something's down 20, 30, 50% is really difficult. But we need to zig while the market zags. You know, we need to be in that 10% that is doing the things that most people are not. We've got to remember that 90% of this market actually doesn't make money. We only hear the good stories. So we need to be doing what the opposite are, are doing. And that's ultimately you know, the reverse psychology of what your brain's probably telling you. I want to show you a chart here of the last uh, uh, Bitcoin bull market that we went through from the, the COVID lows of 2020 through to the April uh, 2021 all-time highs when Bitcoin ran from 8,000, you know, to 65,000. 13 times Bitcoin went down 10% plus. You know, at it, it some uh, some corrections, we had 20%, 28%, 26%. You know, these are pretty deep corrections that, you know, are quite relative to where we are right now. I mean, Bitcoin pulled back just recently, you know, 18, 20%. This is very normal. And altcoins are leveraged positions, guys. Altcoins will over um, over correct on the downside and they're going to over um, over push up on the, on the upside as well in terms of when we get in those euphoric periods. I personally don't trade on the short term. Um, if anything, I, you know, I, I might put a trade swing on or something like that. But again, I'm really only doing long only positions. So I like to add to my positions on these on these down periods. And I'll take profits when we get to the later part of this cycle. But ultimately, I don't want to sell too early uh, right now. And I think we are still a long way to go. Now, one of the really interesting things about where we are in, in this cycle is that Bitcoin's really starting to be seen as this risk off asset. So we're starting to. And this is something that you know a lot of you probably believe in and I've believed for a long time that Bitcoin will continue to be seen as, will continue to grow to be seen as this risk off asset. Like where do you put your money when the, the US dollar continues to lose its purchasing power? When the stock market, you know, is yes, it's growing, grinding higher, but not even really outpacing inflation. Gold's not outpacing inflation over the last four or five years. Like where are you going to put your money? 
and Fidelity, one of the largest asset managers in the US, now actually have Bitcoin in their conservative and balanced ETF funds, right? Which is absolutely wild to think that that's actually happening right now. I think that's coming to Australia soon. And I think over time, the consistent demand of, of, of Bitcoin is going to con- continue to grind the price up for Bitcoin. I think the, the level that we'll get to from the foundation of the next bear market will be a lot higher than where we are now. So people thinking about these cycles and getting in out at certain times. Yes, I believe that. But for me, you know, I want to continue building my Bitcoin stack over a long period of time. I think Bitcoin's going to outperform everything. Uh, and I think Bitcoin will be coming to superannuation funds. I think more retirement funds will be getting involved. Um, and if you think about if, if, if people are thinking about Bitcoin as a conservative or balanced investment with a limited supply, like for me, that's just an absolute no brainer. You get these volatile movements on the, in the, in the short term, but the long term, in my opinion, is only going one way, which is super exciting. Now, you know, from a from an ETF perspective as well, we've obviously seen a little bit of a, a, a not a correction, but you know, a slowdown of those funds coming in. We've got to think too, guys. A lot of these bigger funds, institutions, uh, sovereign wealth funds, they can't just go and buy something, you know, overnight. For example, they need to go through board approvals. There's a lot of paperwork, a lot of meetings. It takes months and months for sometimes these investments to be approved. The ETF's only been up for three or four months now. Four months, I think. Over time, as, as, as this you know, market evolves and more and more people um, start to, to look at alternative investments, that these ETF inflows will continue to be consistent. And to see, you know, as I said, when you're getting a billion dollar days with only $30 million of new Bitcoin being issued, like it's a, it's a recipe for, um, you know, for growth. And this is that chart on the left-hand side here. Sorry, yeah, on the left-hand side, you can see this was pre-Bitcoin halving in terms of the new daily issuance and post-Bitcoin halving, we're down to 30 million, which is uh, which is super crazy. Uh, again, this was just a bit of sentiment. So in terms of altcoin season, a big question that I get constantly is like, well, when is altcoin season coming, Ben? When can we start to see our altcoins start to grow? Again, altcoins are driven by retail investors and narratives and money flowing from top to bottom. I really don't think we're going to start to see big movements in altcoin season and still until we start to see money rotating and people starting to sell down their Bitcoin positions. The Bitcoin dominance is a chart that I like to look at, you know, uh, quite often and at the moment we're about 53, 54%. In previous bull markets before we kicked off in the altcoin season, Bitcoin dominance got as high as 68%. So I, I think we're going to continue to see Bitcoin I, I, what I believe will happen will be will be Bitcoin continue to grow, uh, more investment coming in, more money, and we hit you know grind towards that sort of hundred thousand dollar level. And as I said, I think that's going to be the narrative that's going to draw retail investors back, and that money start to rotate down into altcoins. Now, a few things I want you to remember when looking at these altcoins and, and figuring out the ones that you're going to invest in and the ones that uh, you're going to stay away from. Um, in terms of just a big common problem and I, and I hope you guys are doing this as, as more sophisticated investors but like do not look at the token price the token price does not matter the token price is just an indication of the market uh, cap to, you know um, divided by the amount of tokens in supply and one of the uh, examples I like to use here uh, if I can bring this up this will work great is alluvium so you know the reason why we need to look at market cap and the circulating supply which a lot of people don't is the amount of uh, new issuance of these projects that are pushing new supply into the market so if we look at uh over the course of uh, alluvium's history like you know this got as high as 1700 dollars, nearly the all-time high it's currently down 94 percent right from its all-time highs now arguably you'd be saying okay well like maybe this whole coin can get back to all-time highs like what does that look like but if we look at the market cap of this project market cap wise we were actually 25 percent from the peak only about a month ago from a market cap perspective. And that's because the amount of circulating supply and total supply has increased so much that the token actually needs to uh, you know, 10x, 15x the market cap just to get back to previous all-time highs, which a lot of people don't think about. Okay, so that's one uh, thing we need to look at when investing in altcoins. Another one that I like to look at is you know, especially in corrections, how is that altcoin performing against Bitcoin in those corrections? Because usually if an altcoin is performing well against Bitcoin in a correction, it's usually showcasing good fundamentals, okay? So if you look at something like XRP, which personally I'm not a huge fan of it and I don't own, um, we look at something like XRP, this is down 51% against Bitcoin over the last year. So if you were to hold Bitcoin versus holding make, uh, sorry, for holding Bitcoin versus holding XRP, you were down 50% against Bitcoin. Like you're taking all this risk to hold an altcoin, 
what like but it's down 50 percent against bitcoin like it just makes no sense to me and again this is another reason i'm not a big fan of xrp the circulating supply they continue to push more uh tokens into um into the uh, uh ecosystem and it's just not a not a great project for me that i want to invest in now if we look at one of my favorites that we've invested in at collective shift make a dow you know make a dow is a is, is, is a central is basically you know, a central bank uh, for, for the crypto world issuing stable coins and and you know it's been around for a long time it's got a lot of token upgrades it's doing a lot of great things up 73 percent against bitcoin right so this is showcasing to me that it's actually quite strong and relatively performing relatively well against bitcoin even in the last seven days and 14 days i'd argue that this is actually pretty good you know versus bitcoin uh altcoins are always going to be again going to be pushing leverage to the downside and leverage to the upside so in, in corrections they're going to go down more than bitcoin but you want to see the ones that are correcting uh you know less than uh, less than others and you know that traditionally gives you a good in, indication of some of the fundamentals that you're looking at now diluted market cap i just spoke about looking at that versus just the market cap in terms of the the, the new supply that's going to come in um, and, the, and the and the last one is narratives like narratives drives markets and i think that's something that we all should know by now whether or not something has value like let's say meme coins for example meme coins fundamentally don't have a lot of utility or value but it's the narratives that drive it in saying that on the downside when you're looking at something for longevity if narrative is the only thing that's driving at the, the price of a token and it doesn't have fundamental value, it's going to perform poorly over time. And that's why personally I don't invest in the meme coins is because yes, you can make a lot of money in the short term, but when the, the tide goes out, you know who's left holding the bag? What are the things that are driving fundamental value? It's not meme coins. And that's why you know a lot of these projects decline so much in bear markets is because once the community goes away, once the, the speculation goes away, there's nothing else there for it to drive value. And it's something that we focus on a collective shift is looking at risk versus reward and fundamental value and actual genuine utility of tokens that are going to last them through two, three, four, five years time. Like what are the projects going to last through a bear market? They're the ones I want to be investing in. Okay, so getting involved in narratives, you know, when when I invested really heavily in the metaverse back in 2018, I, I believe metaverse was going to be big. I didn't know, but it was a it was a bet I was willing to take and that paid off massively. Where am I looking at the moment? Like, yes, AI is there, gaming's there. Um, you know, I I actually think where I'm putting a, a more attention at the moment is the layer three space on Ethereum. And there's a project that uh, we recently invested in that I'm excited about um, in the layer three space. Again, why do we need layer threes? That's you know still to be seen in terms of do we need those actual DApps to be um, you know running on it on a on a high leverage position on ETH we'll wait and see but again narratives drives markets and i think layer threes is an interesting space that will be starting to pick up a bit more narrative um that the project we're looking at is, is dmt uh it's a basically a a project that um is building like a decentralized uh you know youtube basically uh where the, the token is the token that uh, derives value from creators creating content, uh, but also the audience consuming that content can get reward in those tokens. They've got some great economics, uh, tokenomics, bootstrap, good team. Um, and again, if the layer three narrative picks up, I think that's going to be an interesting one to look at. You know, another one that we were looking at, this was back um, in our membership back in February uh, of last year. You know, Pendle was an interesting one. This is up more than 40x, I think, from when we invested. It was about five cents when we when we spoke about it. Um, and hit about six dollars recently like this was a narrative play uh that that also has the fundamentals and this is what's driven it so much like narrative can only get you so far and then the sort of fundamentals kick in and, and pendle has been a great one that we've looked at um and also recently like getting into things like you know when solana really took off in the meme coin mania jupiter is basically the meta mask of solana so that was a great play make a dow again strong fundamentals uh good you, you know user adoption uh good tokenomics Looking at things that not only have narrative but also have the good fundamentals is the is the is the combo that you need. DMT was the one that we spoke about um, just before that gaming project in the layer three space. But you know, in terms of the short term, I think like retail interest is growing, but certainly nowhere near where we where we were in previous cycles. And I expect us probably to be about fifty percent of the way through um, the bull market right now. I think altcoin season is still to come. I'll be looking at sectors like. Uh, you know, I, I'm really bullish on DeFi. There's a couple of you know plays in there that which I'm bullish on. Unfortunately, the SEC at the moment have got Uniswap in their sites. But if you have the Kahuna's to back DeFi, I think that's a great play. Like Maple is one of my favorites. Layer three DMT, which I'm looking at. Make a DAO, which I'm super bullish on. 
Um, also, you know, Jupiter on, on Solana and Solana. I'm, I'm excited on, again, Ethereum. I think Ethereum's a great risk to reward play at the moment. Um, has under, you know, performed, I guess, with Bitcoin being the spotlight, but I think that's going to come back later this year. Uh, and yeah, there's a few other sectors we're looking at, but I think they're the main ones in terms of you know positioning your portfolio to to really make the most of this year, but also ensure that having a large percentage of your portfolio in Bitcoin and ETH, because I think if you don't have that right now, you've seen the downside and the drawdowns that you get in corrections, right? Altcoins bleed a lot more than, than Bitcoin and ETH. So hopefully that's been helpful. Um, it's an exciting time. I think uh, we're going to consolidate here and, and, and sort of push through it pretty choppy for the next few weeks. But again, still later this year, I think it's going to be an exciting time to be in crypto. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, this video, this little presentation. If you like this sort of uh, style content, I'd love for you to give me a feedback. Please leave me a subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment if there's uh, any feedback or any ideas you want me to create content on. But I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, guys.